Hey everyone, my name is Wedge, and welcome to our second Dragons of Tark here spoiler video of the day. We have plenty to talk about, including a mythic rare that's not literally mythic, the last of the two-color command cycle, and actually some really sad news about a certain turtle friend. It's... you're not ready for this. We'll start with Vial of Dragonfire. Yeah, we finally get to see it. Renowned Weaponsmith can finally be happy. Anyways, the vial is too colorless for an artifact. You can pay two mana, tap it, and sacrifice it to have the vial deal two damage to target creature. You know, for the amount of hype around vial, I did not expect it to do so little. Don't get me wrong, this is playable and limited. We're talking about a removal spell for morph creatures. It does take four mana total, but that wouldn't stop me from playing it. It isn't an auto-include in every limited strategy, but it certainly could be worse. Two damage is relevant in this format. Myth Realized is one white mana for an enchantment that, despite its name, is rare rather than mythic rare. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a lore counter on Myth Realized. You can pay three mana to put a lore counter on it. You can also pay one white mana and until end of turn it becomes a monk avatar in addition to its other types, and its power and toughness are each equal to the number of lore counters on it. Well, looks like Blue White Heroic keeps getting the nuts. This card's fantastic. One white is the perfect cost to make it standard playable. There are plenty of white decks using mainly non-creature spells. Best part about this, you don't even have to make it a creature until it's out of removal range. Stoke the Flames and Bioblight are both awful, but just sit on this until it's big enough then swing in for a bunch of damage for a cheap, cheap cost. Yes, I know it dies to enchantment removal, but Rabble Master dies to creature removal. You don't see players avoiding that card, do you? Look. Myth Realized has a real shot at standard play. If people are main decking enchantment hate, oh well, but if they aren't, this could be a powerhouse. Silk Wrap is two mana for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature with converted mana cost three or less in opponent controls until Silk Wrap leaves the battlefield. The opposite of suspension field, this is going to hit morph and aggressive creatures hard and limited. This type of removal is always first pickable as far as I'm concerned. Looking at standard, there are big guns this doesn't hit. Tassiger, Sea Drano, Pelucranos, you get it. Anyways, that's why this card would be perfect in sideboards against any type of Jeskai aggro deck. Basically any strategy that runs Rabble Master or Soulfire Grandmaster. Being able to eliminate those cards for two mana in white? I'd say that's pretty important. You could look at this card as a control sideboard card to answer the aggressive decks in the meta. At least that's how I see it. It was a good time to print something like this. It wouldn't be a magic set without a ridiculously costed blue mythic. Clone Legion is 7 colorless and 2 blue for a sorcery. For each creature target player controls, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature. This is a commander card? No, it does not fit anywhere else, but that's fine. Jaleva, Narset, Riku, there are plenty of places for a ridiculous card like this to go, and even more enablers to play it without paying its full cost. I'm not saying this is going to be a commander staple, but the potential to grab your opponent's entire board and basically copy-paste it to your side of the field is hilarious. You can't deny that. This is a funny card. Grab your pen and paper because there's no good way to keep track of that many tokens. Damnable Pact is, ah, we did a video on this already because it was our exclusive spoiler. Check it out right here. Go think wizards. They're great. Let's, let's move on. This next part gets some tissues. Remember Meandering Tower Shell? I took to calling him Ralph, so let's go with that. Ralph was just minding his own business in old cons, just walking around, meandering, trying to avoid stepping on people, just living his life. In New Tarkir, this is Ralph now. I t this is harder than I thought it would be. Ralph, what happened? Silumgar, I really hate you sometimes. What did Ralph ever do to you? It's just such a bully. R.I.P. Ralph, you were a great turtle. Commune with Lava is X and 2 red for an instant. Exile the top X cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. Let me just get this out of the way right now. I know what you're thinking. Storm and Modern, right? Yeah, get away from that. The X is too high of a cost. Storm gets what? Three to four lands in play, maybe? They aren't going to have the mana to do this, let alone the mana to want to do this. They could just play their win cons instead. If they can take advantage of the X cost in this, they might as well just win, you know? So where does this fit? Commander, any red deck ever that wants card draw, you know, the usual. 
It's instant speed. It lets you cast the spells until your next turn, which means that you can cast this on your turn, exile the cards, and then you have another whole turn to go back and cast them. This also gives you that coveted untapped step to work with. You can't just drop this on your opponent's end step and then untap with a ton of gas in your pseudo hand. I like Red's pseudo draw ability. This is an interesting take on it, and I think it could see commander play. As for viability and constructed, I honestly don't know. I don't think that this is what decks want to be doing. No matter when you cast it, you're letting your shields down for at least a turn. It's just something to think about. Inox Survivalist is 2 mana for a 2 1 hound shaman with Megamorph costing 2 mana. When it's turned face up, destroy target artifact or enchantment. This is a great card, especially during a time when green white devotion is becoming a thing. Destroying mastery of the unseen seems pretty good, especially when it's off of a triggered ability and not casting a spell. You can't respond to turning the survivalist face up, but you can respond to the when this turns face up trigger. Mastery of the unseen will never see it coming. Great way to attack the mirror match. Beyond that, it's a useful ability. Ends up being a 3-2, which isn't irrelevant. I think the sideboard standard play is certainly possible, especially in a world filled with whips, masteries, and ascendancies. We finally got our last command card. Dromoka's command is one green and one white for an instant. Choose two. Prevent all damage target instant or sorcery spell would deal this turn. Target player sacrifices an enchantment. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, and target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Wow, okay. Let me change the wording of one of these. Instead of it saying target player sacrifices an enchantment, they should be saying target player sacrifices a courser of crew fix. The value on this card is unreal, not to mention the synergies here. Two mana for an instant that lets you pump a creature and then fight is pretty sweet. I think the biggest selling point for this card is the cost. Being able to fog a stoke the flames, or kill a whip, or buff a creature, or use removal is powerful. Being able to do two of them for two mana at instant speed, this is going to see standard play. It has to. It's way too efficient not to. We were talking about main deck enchantment hate before, and how it isn't really a thing. It might be now. Crap. We were also treated to some amazing new basic land artwork. What I love about the new basics is that they look way more chaotic than in previous sets. Now that dragons have returned, things are more hectic than ever. Except, of course, for the Dromoka clan, they're just hanging out in paradise, it seems. Either way, these are beautiful as expected. Another huge bunch of spoilers. What do you all think about what we saw today? The command is great, Ralph is gone, that really sucks, and we got a bunch of unique and interesting cards. Which ones were your favorites? Let me know in the comments. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Dragons of Tarkir spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source, I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.